Alongside Blair Angulo, I am Emily Proud. Welcome into the College Football Recruiting Show. As you can see, we are coming at you live from each of our home studios. Uh, it's been a wild few weeks, to say the least, but I am certainly glad that we are back here and talking recruiting. Blair, what have you been up to? It's been a busy off season. There were a ton of camps earlier this month. And then this past weekend, we were in Las Vegas for the Bishop Gorman Pro Day, the Polynesian Combine, as well as the Under Armour camp down in Southern California and, and a ton of other action across the country. Make sure you stay locked in to 247sports.com for all the coverage. Yeah, although we have been busy, the world of recruiting has been busy, so we got to hit you with some headlines. First and foremost, a major flip news coming out yesterday. Five-star defensive lineman Justice Terry flipping his commitment from Georgia to USC. We'll talk a lot of Trojans on today's show, but first, Blair, how surprising was this move? A little surprising considering that you've got a Georgia recruit flipping from the Bulldogs to a team across the country, but USC is going all in on defensive prospects early on in this 2025 cycle, and they hit a huge home run with Justice Terry. All right, some good news for the Bulldogs, though, as they add 2026 quarterback Jared Curtis. Now, while it's very early in the rankings process for the 26 class, he is currently considered the number one quarterback and top player overall in the cycle. But Blair, what overall do we need to know about this big get? Three dozen scholarship offers already after his sophomore season, a loaded tool set. Curtis checks off all the boxes right now with arm strength and physicality, and it's huge for Georgia, which has whiffed on a number of five-star prospects in recent cycles, including Arch Manning a couple years ago, and then they had the loss of Dylan Riola late in the 2024 cycle, so a big win early on in 2026 for Georgia. We will see if they can hold on to it. Also, seven-on-seven -seven tournaments continue all across the country. The latest happening in H-Town. Our Hudson Standish will be joining us later on in the show for a full breakdown, but Blair, hit us with some of the highlights from the Battle 77. It was a loaded weekend down in Texas. Not only the Battle 7-on-7, seven seven, but also the Elite 11 quarterback camp down in Austin. SMU commit Keelan Russell was the alpha dog from our team at 24-7 Sports, as well as KJ Lacey, the Texas-bound quarterback, punching his ticket to the Elite 11 finals in Los Angeles this summer, as well as Kevin Sperry, the longtime Oklahoma commit. So we're excited to see them battle it out this summer at the Elite 11 finals. Yes, we are looking forward to having that conversation later on in the show. But first, we have to talk Trojans. And to do that, we welcome in Chris Trevino from uscfootball.com. Chris, joining the program now, starting with, I mean, just overall, the recruiting news has really been coming fast and furious over the past couple of days. But we have to start with a headliner. Big time flip of a big time prospect. Chris, how did USC land five-star defensive lineman Justice Terry? Well, very simply, it starts with one man, and that's Eric Henderson, their new defensive line coach who has made waves since he arrived from the Los Angeles Rams and the NFL. He was their final hire of that new defensive staff, and he has made a huge impression with recruits that have come on campus this year. He's personable. He knows how to get players to the NFL. He coached one of the best of all time in Aaron Donald, who was there on Saturday with Justice Terry at the practice field, so I'm sure AD had some words of encouragement for Justice Terry, but Eric Henderson is the guy for the point man for this recruitment. And, you know, Justice Terry spoke about the business school being a big factor for him, being from a small town, Georgia uh, town and wanting to expand his horizons. Los Angeles obviously can offer that. But above all, kids want to get to the next level. And when you have a guy who was at one point the best defensive line coach in the NFL, well, that resume speaks for itself. And I'm sure, again, Aaron Donald had some some words of encouragement for getting coached by Coach Henderson. So Eric Henderson is the man behind this big flip, and it sends a message across college football like Eric Henderson is here to recruit the best defensive linemen, best defensive prospects across the country. Obviously, because you win this battle in March does not mean you're going to win it in December. USC still has to sign Justice Terry, and we'll see how their NIL holds up throughout the rest of the year. But as of right now, Eric Henderson has Trojan fans believing they can sign anyone in the country. 
Chris, you and I were down in Orange County for the Under Armour next camp series stop down in the in the Southern California area, and that was the buzz that Aaron Donald was on campus to check out the Trojan scrimmage, and it's and it's really resonating with recruits not only in 2025 but in 2026. The Trojans are already off and running four commitments. The latest coming out from the state of Florida. How do they get it done with Dominic Kelly? Yeah, I mean Kelly fits the profile of these long cornerbacks that USC has been recruiting. They, if you look at their roster now, they have a six foot three John Humphreys, six foot two DeCarlos Nicholson. They got from uh, Mississippi State. It just fits this mold of what Danton Lynn wants to do. And Kelly, six foot one, one hundred and seventy five pounds, fits what they want to do. That length on the edge. He has been to campus before, and USC is getting these traction visits earlier and earlier and able to close with these guys. So USC has also been doing a good job in Florida. They've been stealing a couple of Florida prospects out of the Sunshine State. So just having that relationship and that rapport out there is it's it's paying off right now. Another commitment that uh, Trojan fans, I feel like, always want an update on. Uh, five-star quarterback Julian Lewis. He has been committed to Lincoln Riley since last August, but has taken tons of visits since then. I know USC fans are sweating a bit, so what is the latest with Lewis? Yeah, every couple of weeks, we feel like we hear chatter of a potential flip or message board posts freaking out about his status. Instagram posts, all those kinds of things. But Julian Lewis, yes, he's been taking his visits going across the country. And as of right now, he is scheduled to return to USC this coming weekend. He's hit up Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, and then Colorado this past weekend. But I talked to his camp, and they are still scheduled to come out to USC, which is a big boost, a big, you know, holding on to that visit. There is plans to possibly come back out again for a second trip, possibly that April 20th spring game for USC, which be which would be a big boost again for getting him back on campus. Julian Lewis, the the gem of this class. And, you know, he spoke to, when I spoke to him last, you know, we talked about how they need to get some studs in this class. That's how they're going to win on the field. And I'm sure Sunday was a big eye opener for what the potential is for USC in the 2025 class and building around him as the quarterback. We had some rain. We had some clouds down in Southern California. Uncharacteristic here for this time of year uh, in Los Angeles. We saw some recruits wearing rain ponchos at, at the scrimmage. But it's sunny days on, on the Peristyle, the message board over at uscfootball.com because there's a lot of optimism and there's a lot of excitement about what they're doing in recruiting. What's next, Chris, for Lincoln Riley and this USC staff heading into the spring eval period? Yeah, if you ask the USC fan, they say they're going to get everyone moving forward, but just a couple of names to throw out there. I'm going to keep it on the defensive side. Dorian Brew, the, the big cornerback out of Texas by way of Ohio, Ohio State lean, was on campus this weekend. You know, he's been on campus multiple times. Uh, don't be surprised if he's back sooner rather than later. There is some smoke coming out of this weekend about Dorian Brew. They have been working on him very, very hard. Another kid is a local kid. We've been talking about all these prospects across the country but Noah McHale he has been their primary number one linebacker target right there in their backyard out of Bonita High School he has been to campus so many times I joke it's in the thousands but getting him to finally commit to lock this one down after all the momentum they built up this past weekend would be huge and getting a local kid who grew up a USC fan to be a part of this class and also remember that USC is recruiting a very uh, deep SoCal recruiting pool and then the final one is another defensive lineman, Brandon Brown. Brandon Brown out of Florida, currently a Texas commit. He took his first visit to USC earlier in the year. He's been to SoCal multiple times with his California Power 7-on-7 seven -seven team, but this was his first chance to get to USC and meet Eric Henderson, and they made a big, big impression for him. So much so that right after the visit, he said, yeah, I'm coming back for an official visit. So I think Eric Henderson, you know, we've seen what he can do with the Justice Terry, Isaiah Gibson, get him in there. Maybe he's going to pull off another flip from another big power five program. So those are some names to keep a lookout for and all defensive guys. I love it. I know Trojan fans love to hear it. Uh, all those recruits on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, looking at it right now, they're the number 16 ranked class. Number one, though, in terms of average per player ranking with those two five stars and four in the top 100. So a lot of excitement for Trojan football right now. Chris, thanks so much for being here to break it all down. We appreciate it. You can check out more of his work on uscfootball.com. As you can hear, the recruiting is really starting to pick up there. Make sure you're keeping it locked in to uscfootball.com.
Let's go all across the country to hear about the latest recruiting news with national recruiting analyst Tom Loy joining us here. Tom, let's start with the number one tackle in the class of 2025, the number two overall player, David Sanders. He has been on many visits, looking at his player profile, just scrolling through all the visits he's been on, all the ones he has on the horizon. So just keep us locked into what's going on right now with him. What's the latest? All the visits he's taken, but there's one school that he's seen a lot more than the rest, and that's Clemson. I, th I think the Tiger is in a great spot right now. Um, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, South Carolina, and Tennessee are the other players in this one. And he's expected to take all of his official visits. What's intriguing to me, from my perspective, is that Clemson's going to get the first crack at him. I think they're the team to beat right now. Can Clemson, can Matt Luke, Dabo Sweeney, can they get him to shut it down after that visit, get him committed, get him to completely end his recruitment? Or can they at least be in the pole position heading into those final five or so official visits at that point? So it's going to be something to watch. Can they really hold on to them if they have the lead and see how it plays out? But right now, I think all eyes are on Clemson. I think they're doing a great job, and I think they're the team to beat. A high-profile recruitment, and, and I, I don't think anyone can really keep their eyes off what David Sanders is going to do this spring and this summer. Another player that's been raising a lot of eyebrows, Jamie French. We've joked that he is magnifique. Uh, which translates to magnific mag magnificent in French. Uh, and he's a receiver that committed to Alabama last summer, decommitted earlier this year. Tom, what's the latest in the recruitment of Jamie French? Still watching five schools, Ohio State, Florida State, Miami, Texas, Tennessee, all very much in play. He's coming off an incredible visit to Tennessee that and talking to some, some sources there within that program. They feel like they moved the needle for the volunteers and it's something they needed. I think Texas is a sleeper in this one that isn't getting talked about enough. I know there's plans to get there in June for an official visit. If that happens, I would absolutely consider them a real th a real threat. Um, I think Miami is probably the, the most likely in-state school to land him, uh, beating out Florida State in, in that one. Um, he's got a great relationship with the entire staff, not just Mario Cristobal, but the entire staff and Coral Gables. Don't rule them out by any stretch. But for me, my crystal ball is on Ohio State. Uh, I like what Brian Hartline's doing at the receiver position. I think everybody would say that. And I think the Buckeyes right now are the team to beat for him. All right. We are still, of course, reeling from the Justice Terry flip. And we just talked to Chris Ravino from uscfootball.com a little bit more on how all that went down and how they hold on to him. But it just makes me think, Tom, while we got you, who else should be on flip watch? I'm not sure exactly when things could go down. And I'm definitely, you know, you're definitely going to see a lot of movement. It happens every cycle, early, middle, even especially late. But I'm watching Oregon. And I think that there's two receiver commits in the top 247 that they have Dallas Wilson and Adrian Wilson, no relation. But I could see Dallas, the number 64 overall player in the country, eventually opening up his process potentially sooner rather than later. Um, I was surprised at the initial commitment. And at this point, I actually think he's going to return home to the Sunshine State and land somewhere there. I think the smart money's on Florida or Miami. Um, and then Adrian, the country's number 182 overall player, is another one I've been tracking for a while. Actually, going back to the All-American Bowl underclassmen combine, um, Penn State's been working really hard on him. There, there's a lot of suitors for this kid. Um, if he decides to open it up, which I think is something that could potentially happen, he's going to have a bunch of schools coming after him. He's extremely, uh, extremely talented. I saw him this weekend at Battle Houston, I mean, he has Sunday level ability. I think he's a guy that will play on Sundays. So keep an eye on those two if you're Oregon. And then I'm watching Elias Williams as well, the number one tight end in America, longtime Georgia commit. I continue to hear a lot of buzz around Miami. I know he took a visit there. I know Florida State's also in play. They're a major heavy hitter in that one. Look for him to take a, a multiple official visits before completely shutting that one down. But honestly, I struggle to see him actually sticking with the Bulldogs, but Long way to go, and he's an in-state guy, so they're going to you know, do all they can to keep him. Lastly, um, keeping an eye on Solomon Thomas, the number one interior lineman in the 2025 class. He's been committed to Florida State since December of 2023, but South Carolina, LSU, Florida, and Miami are all pushing hard. They're all on the spring visit list for him. He's going to take official visits, but we talked about for a while, Miami surging in a lot of recruitments, and this is one that I could see the Hurricanes making this one very interesting and potentially flipping him from the uh, in-state rival. It happens every recruiting cycle. Flips are on the horizon. Unofficial visits are here. Official visits are around the corner. A lot of activity throughout the country, Tom. I'm not going to put a ticker on you. There's no stopwatch here, but let's empty the notebook. Let's go rapid fire. What else do you have for us in terms of recruiting intel? 
Let's look at five-star offensive tackle Josh Petty out of uh, Roswell, Georgia, Fellowship Christian School, Auburn, Clemson, Tennessee, and others are all in play. I'm close to firing a crystal ball for, for Georgia. I think the distance is a factor. I think the Bulldogs are the team to beat right now. Uh, Lincoln Cure, saw him this weekend at Battle Houston, top 100 tight end out of Goodland, Kansas. I've had my crystal ball in for Kansas State for a while, but he's going to take a couple trips. He wants to visit Oregon, Texas A&M, and Penn State. It's going to take all official visits, decision coming after that before his senior season. My crystal ball is on Kansas State. They're the team to beat right now. We'll see if anybody else can play catch up. Jordan Young, top 100 safety out of Monroe, North Carolina. Um, I'm close to joining Anna Adams on the crystal ball for Clemson. They've long been considered the favorite in that recruitment. Florida State and Tennessee are very much in play. We also talked about Houston, and he said that official visits will matter, will play a factor, but I like the Tigers right now, and I think they're the team to beat. Derek Meadows, top 100 prospect out of Vegas. Bishop Gorman, Blair, a guy you know very well and like. Um, I think you'd agree with me that Notre Dame is, is the team to beat right now. They've been on him longer than just about anybody, and they've been treating him like a priority. Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, LSU, and a few others are all very much in play. He's going to take a, a slew of official visits, unofficial visits, all to kind of get closer to that final decision before his senior season. But at this point, it's really hard to see him landing anywhere other than South Bend. Uh, two more we'll touch on. Michael Fasusi, top 100 offensive lineman out of Louisville, Texas. Spent the weekend in Texas. I talked to a bunch of sources there. They made it very clear that the Longhorns are going to be very tough to beat. And I'm close to joining Hank South, who does a great job covering Texas for us at 24-7 Sports. Close to joining him on the crystal ball and uh, picking Texas there. And then lastly, Tarvos TJ Alford, top 100 linebacker out of Vero Beach, uh, Florida. I think that, you know, he's definitely got a commitment coming March 30th. Um, Ohio State, Miami, Florida, Florida State, Tennessee, all very much in play. But I've kind of been watching Ohio State and Miami. I was leaning towards Miami for a while, but actually just five days out from his decision, I actually think the Buckeyes could be the team to beat down the stretch here. But so so my my, my gut feeling is that James Laurinaitis and that, and that staff, Ryan Day and those guys, I think Ohio State gets it done following a recent visit to Columbus. All that said, Despite this being over in five days, this one has a, a feel like it's going to be far from over and he's going to you know, take his time and you're going to have to recruit him all the way to the end. A lot to keep track of, but we are so thankful for you, Tom, to help us break down all of this. A lot of recruiting news, and I'm sure that that will only continue as this cycle does. Tom, thanks so much for being here. Thanks. You can check out more of his work on 247sports.com. Make sure that you are locked in. Uh, for all my basketball fans, though, that's a great place to get info on the college basketball transfer portal. It's open right now. And before you know it, the spring portal window for football will be open for business. And 247sports.com is the place to be. Meanwhile, the place to be this weekend was the Lone Star State. The Battle Houston 7v7 tournament was there. And over in Austin, Elite 11 took place. So it's a good thing that our national scouting analyst, Hudson Standish, was there for both and is here with us now. Hudson, let's start with uh, Battle 7-on-7 Seven Seven in Houston. Who are your standout names from that event? Yeah, so Battle came through to Houston. And who better to start with than the hometown kid, Keyshawn Henderson, the number 69 overall prospect in the class of 2026 playing safety, playing wide receiver. For his high school team, he plays quarterback. And, you know, he's getting a little bit of interest uh, as a signal caller. But I think his ceiling is the highest at safety. It's pretty rare to have the coverage ability that he has, in addition to, you know, the plays that he can make at the catch point. This weekend, it felt like nearly every drive, whether it was on offense or defense, Keyshawn Henderson was making plays against some of the best players, not only in the class of 2026, but a year above him in the class of 2025. In addition to Keyshawn Henderson, I was really impressed with Luke Fahey. Tom Loy, who you just heard from, named him the alpha dog of Battle Houston, leading California Power to the title over DEFCON Texas. In addition to uh, his exploits on the 7-on-7 seven -seven circuit, at Mission Viejo, he led them to their first state title in eight years. It was a pretty windy weekend in Texas, um, but he was able to kind of consistently deliver the ball on a line to receivers. Spray chart was all over the field. Really impressive for the rising junior. And then finally, Jaden Nickens out of the state of Oklahoma. We rarely get to see him uh, in these live exposure events because not only on the football field, but he's a potential Division I hooper as well. Jaden Nickens, who decommitted from Oklahoma, 
getting to see him on both sides of the ball while he's likely a wide receiver um, as a kind of field stretching run after the catch playmaker at the next level. Shoot, he got two interceptions this past weekend, and I could see some programs maybe continuing their evaluation and saying, could he be that modern type of defensive chess piece that we can put at safety, spin down to linebacker if he gains some weight? Really intrigued by him. Hudson, you spent your Saturday at Battle 7-on-7. Seven seven. On Sunday, you were in Austin for the Elite 11 Regional as three more players punched their tickets to the Elite 11 Finals this summer. Who were your top performers from that event on Sunday? Covering the event with uh, Gabe Brooks and Mike Roach down here in the state of Texas, I think we all agreed that Keelan Russell had a weekend to remember. Not only did he punch his ticket to the Elite 11 Finals in Los Angeles, uh, Blair, Emily, Saturday night, he ran the 4 by 400 in addition to the open 400. That 4 by 400 time that he set with Duncanville, number two in the uh, nation for high schoolers. And then he gets there, tired legs. It doesn't matter. He's just slinging it. He had the most velocity of any quarterback at the camp. He might not have been as sharp as when he won Alpha Dog honors at Under Armour Dallas a few weeks ago. But for the most part, you kind of saw that 72 plus percent completion percentage player, um, you know, just able to make any throw that you didn't really need. Uh, so Keelan Russell, I, I think that the number 63 player uh, in the country might be one of the more intriguing quarterbacks in the national scope, not just the state of Texas. Um, in addition to him, Ty Hawkins from San Antonio Johnson, the TCU commit, I thought he had a really solid showing for himself. Um, probably was the only other quarterback that was really pushing Keelan Russell for alpha dog honors on the day. And although he didn't uh, stamp a trip to California for the lead 11 finals, I could see him eventually getting a invite just based on his consistent performance uh, throughout the day. And then finally, I want to talk about Adam Schobel. This is a small school kid from the state of Texas. He plays at Columbus high school, which is a three, a program, but his dad, his uncle, and another relative all played in the NFL for a decent amount of time. And you look at his frame, verified over six foot, four and a half, now 190 pounds, really consistent thrower, has a quick release, and is starting to add a little bit more zip on the ball. I think that as Schobel continues to fill out into his frame, there might be some untapped potential um, that he could really uh, reach. And I think the Baylor Bears would probably benefit from. After this, there are six more regionals for Elite 11. And then, of course, as Blair said, the final is coming up this summer, June, we think. But Hudson, thank you so much for being here to break that all down for us. We really do appreciate it. Make sure that you are locked into the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. If you're watching us on it right now, you know how to get there. We'll have shows throughout the week. We're dropping content that you will not want to miss. Also, if you did happen to miss the 24-7 Sports College Basketball Show today. They broke down the whole Sweet 16. As you can see, Blair, I'm pretty excited about March Madness. I got the hat behind me, uh, so you can go back and watch that show. Blair, first one from home for both of us. I know you're home every single day. I think it went all right. What do you think? I thought it was perfect, and now you guys know, uh, you know the, the type of setup that, that we have to do every uh, Monday, but I, I thought it was seamless. Yeah, we did it. And yes, I do have a, a new appreciation uh, for what you go through, but uh, I'm glad that we were able to make this happen for you, the viewer. Uh, I know that you have been tracking everything that's happening in the world of college football recruiting. So glad that we were able to break it down. For Blair Angulo, I'm Emily Proud, and this is the College Football Recruiting Show.